Okay, I want to do one more lens ray tracing example from Geometric Optics. This one, a weird example that actually has nothing to do with our class. That uh, Our class, and in fact most introductory physics classes, don't ever get to this point. But I want to talk about it because it does sometimes come up in realistic situations. Here's the scenario. Imagine that you are building a set of lenses all in a row. You're building some optical device that has multiple lenses in a row. So you've got a first lens and you've got a second lens separated by some distance. And you put some object before the first lens. And we want to figure out what image we see on the far side, what, what we'll perceive on that far side. Well, the usual procedure for multiple lenses is very well defined. You first pretend the first lens is the only one in the universe find where the image is from that lens, and then you go on and use that image as the object for the next lens. We've done lots of examples like this in class. You're familiar with it by now. Let's run with it and see what happens in the picture that I've drawn here. I take my object, do ray tracing with my first lens as if the second lens wasn't there at all, and the standard ray tracing results gives me an image over here. Now I'm supposed to use this object or this image, rather, as the object for the next lens. But hold on, something's wrong. The image is on the wrong side of the lens. We've never dealt with an object that was on the outgoing side of a lens, because with just a single lens, you can never have that. You never put an object past a lens and then claim that you can look through the lens at the object. It doesn't make sense. But with a multi-lens system, it can come up. You, you can say, I have this image that I'm supposed to be treating as the object for the next lens, but it's on the wrong side. How do I deal with this? How do I deal with the thing when the object is on the outgoing side of the lens instead of the standard incoming side? This is a case called a virtual object. And mathematically, what we do is we just put a negative sign in front of the s, the distance from the uh, image from the object to the lens. We put a minus sign in our equations. Conceptually, all we're doing is just saying, oh, it's just like a virtual image is in some sense on the wrong side of the lens, the incoming side instead of the outgoing side. Here's an object that's on the wrong side of the lens. It's on the outgoing side instead of the ingoing side. So mathematically, same trick. We put a minus sign in there. You can do that. You can just plug through your equations. Everything's fine. But ray tracing, wow. Ray tracing seems like it's going to be a royal pain for this thing. We're this is a standard converging lens, so it's supposed to be easy. Easier than diverging lenses anyway, more familiar. But, but what are we, I'm ray tracing. I've got an object over here. How the heck do I make sense of this? You know, uh, rays from the object go toward the lens and then through, but, but toward the... This doesn't make sense. Here's the mental picture you should have when you're doing ray tracing if you have a virtual object. What you should understand is, oh wait, I have a bunch of rays, and remember my sketch up here is just showing a few of them. I have a whole bunch of rays that are coming together to meet at the point of my, in this sketch, I've got rays from all over this lens that are coming together to meet at the point that is the first image that is my virtual object. So what I need to do is, I need to figure out some set of these rays going toward that virtual object. The rays coming from some previous lens toward that virtual object. I need to figure out which of those rays will look like the principal rays for the new lens. So let's go through our usual list. Principal ray number one is some ray, principal ray number one for this lens is some ray that's going parallel to the axis when it's on this side of the lens, and then we know what it's going to do. It's going to focus in. So, well, hey, I happen to have that drawn up here from, my, from before, from my little sketch. What, a ray that's going from my original lens parallel to the axis toward my virtual object is just parallel like this. So. I'll have a ray that looks like this. Again, it's, it would, uh, let me line this up, make it nice and level, and then we'll talk about it a little bit. I always have to focus when I'm doing this because otherwise I'll draw horribly and that's embarrassing when you're making a video, so we'll, I'll do my best. So okay, something like this. I've got a ray that's coming parallel to the axis. You'll be able to see it as soon as I get out of the way. 
parallel to the axis until it gets here as if as if it was going to go there. So that's my principal ray number one. It's coming parallel to the axis as if it was going to hit my virtual object. Because we know there's a ray, at least in principle, ooh, principle, uh, at least in principle, there's a ray coming in that's going to be that's going to have that angle going toward that point. So I follow that, but wait, all has changed. As soon as it hits the lens, as soon as it hits this second lens, this new lens, this lens makes it bend inward because that's what converging lenses do. This lens makes it go off in that direction. So that is my principal ray number one for my virtual object scenario. It's one that's coming parallel to the axis on the incoming side as if it was going to go to the object, to the virtual object, but then Converging lens bends it that way. Principal ray number one, done. Okay, principal ray number two. I need a ray that's going to go straight through the middle of the lens as if it's going to this object. Hey, that's easy. Principal ray number two is always easy. So, what do I do? Well, I know I've got something like this. So there must be some ray coming inward from my previous lens. That's right. There must be some ray coming in from my previous lens that's going to go straight through the center of this lens without bending and go on and on, again, as if it was going to reach the virtual object if this new lens weren't in the way. That's two, le that's two principal rays done. This was principal ray number two. Let's see. Ray 2, I'll just label it here. This seems as good as anything. Uh, we'll, we'll label this. Never easy to label. Principal ray number 2. I'll label it on both sides. Principal ray number 2, also over here. Principal ray number 1, also over here. Those are my first two principal rays. Principal ray number 3, always the trickiest one, right? Principal ray number 3 is supposed to be, just like principal ray 1, run backward. It's supposed to wind up being parallel to the axis but have actually been at some angle on the other side. Well, what do we have? We've got, if I've got a ray at an angle on the other side that passes through this focal point, we know that rays that pass through the focal point turn parallel on, when they go through on the other side. So I need a ray that passes through this focal point, again, that is one of these rays coming from my previous lens, as if it was going toward that point. Easy enough. I line this up. I know I'm going as if toward my virtual object, as if toward there. Okay, so here's my ray. Hold tight. Here's my ray. It's coming in like this. Oh, don't bend, don't bend. It's coming in. Hmm. Trying to stay out of the way and draw at the same time is a pain. Okay, try this one more time. Ray coming in like this, passing through the focal point. Oh, lost. Okay, through the focal point, and then again, it's as if we know that without the second lens there, if the second lens were absent, this would go on down and come to my virtual object. That's the whole idea, is we're looking at rays that would be coming from the previous lens and focusing down on the virtual object, but instead, this went through the focal point, so when it comes out the other side, we know that instead of going toward the object, now it gets bent around, goes parallel to the axis. Do I have this? A little high. Parallel to the axis. I'm sure watching someone else struggle with their drawing is at least gratifying to you, and comes out on this side. That is principal ray number three, and again, it has the same characteristics that it always does. It's parallel to the axis on this side, and then diverges or you know, does the usual thing on the other side. It bends on the other side. It's just like principal ray one run backward. Looking at all this, hey, all these things have come together at a single point, and 
I don't quite believe my drawing being quite as accurate as it looks like it did, but somewhere right around here is my point. Whoop, hey, careful, careful. Let me draw this carefully, okay. So here we go. There is my image. The actual image that comes out is down here. And we can do a couple measurements first, and then I'll talk about it. Uh, let me do some measurements just so I get them down. That point that I just did is a distance, whoop, distance from the lens, just over 12. My S prime from here to here, S prime is about 12 centimeters. I'll go ahead and use my usual plus or minus maybe one centimeter. I keep underestimating, so I'll call that plus or minus one centimeter, about 12. Maybe plus or minus 0.5 if I really believe. But these lined up pretty well, so maybe it's not so bad. And my height, just to measure my object height, oh, let me measure from here. Starting at 10. My object height appears to be awfully darn close to 5 centimeters. So h prime equals 5 centimeters plus or minus, again, I might want to go 0.5. Maybe plus or minus one. I don't know. But about five centimeters, pretty close to that. So we'll see how this comes out. Um, all right. So let's see what, what we have. Uh, let, let, so first, conceptually, think about what's going on. Uh, right now, we, we, so often we've just talked about these things. Think about what you expect a second converging lens to do in a case like this. I had rays that, will, that were already coming together. I had rays that, will, that were already focusing down to a point. They're already getting closer together. I put a converging lens in the way. Converging lenses tr tend to bring rays more together. They bring rays that were parallel together. If the rays are already coming together, I expect this converging lens to make them come together even faster. And indeed, that's what happened. These were coming together over there, but look, they've bent inward. They've come together even faster. That's what a second converging lens in a row does if you have a virtual object. It just you were converging, converging even faster, so you, cu you come in earlier uh, to, this, to, to find your image point. So we've got that. Um, so th this actually makes a lot of sense physically to me, that the rays that were converging would converge at an earlier point than they would have otherwise. Let's check all this with the lens equation. Our usual lens equation thing, we know 1 over f, thin lens equation approximation, 1 over f equals 1 over s plus 1 over s prime. This pen is dying, so we'll see this other one is thinner, but at least it won't be turning invisible on us. That tells me that 1 over s prime is then 1 over f, that's 1 over 18 centimeters, minus 1 over s. My s was minus 36 centimeters. Oh, for once, it's one with an easy common denominator. We've got 1 over 18 is 2 over 36. That's 2 over 36 centimeters. And minus a negative is plus 1 over 36 centimeters. That's 3 over 36 centimeters, which is easy, 1 over 12 centimeters. So 12 centimeters, oh, I am good. Uh, once again, 12 centimeters is exactly our S prime. And it's a positive 12 because the image is a real image on the outgoing side. And look at this, all of these rays really passed through that point. It, every single ray, I didn't have to trace anything backward in my imagination. Every one of these rays, no dotted lines involved, every one of these rays really passed through that point. They didn't really pass through the object point. The, the object point, and that's why it's a virtual object. The rays did not really pass through that point. Well, one of them did, but all the rays did not, so it's a virtual object. Okay, 1 over 12, I can check my height as well. h prime over h equals minus s prime over s, which is minus, uh, s prime is 12 centimeters, divided by my s was negative 36 centimeters. Negative and negative is a positive. This is plus 1 third. 12 over 36 is a third, plus 1 third. Hey, look at that. That means that my h prime is one third of h, which is one third of 15, five centimeters. I totally should have claimed that that was plus or minus 0.5 to make myself look more awesome. Um, for, I, here, for once, I try to overestimate my uncertainties to be careful, and instead, ah, well.
So, all right, I've got, uh, so again, the math works out. I get a positive h prime because it is not inverted compared to the object. Remember, my object here is pointing downward. So the fact that this is pointing downward, there's no inversion between the two. They just, it, it converged faster, but it didn't flip it in this case. This is how a virtual object works. And again, it comes up an awful lot in systems where you have multiple lenses in a row. Uh, it, you often run into something like this where you have a virtual object you need to deal with. The idea, the concept behind it that you always use is just what rays would be coming from the first lens that make your virtual object, that produce that image that, will, that you're going to treat as a virtual object, what rays would make that? Find rays among those rays that look like our usual three principal rays. And if you can do that, you're set and you can find your virtual, you can find your final image just fine, which again in this case turns out to be real. That is the end of our virtual object example.